This demonstration will cover the performance of the dependent or paired samples t-test. Now in this particular t-test, in contrast to the independent samples t-test, we will now be testing two sets of scores that are related or paired in some way. And by related, we mean that the two sets of scores are from the same group or single group of subjects, or we have two sets of scores from very closely matched sets of different people, like for example, identical twins. So we're going to use this technique primarily when we're doing a pretest, post-test kind of experimental design, or maybe a crossover experimental design in which a single group of subjects get subjected to two different treatments, and we're then going to compare those two sets of scores. Okay, we've got a couple assumptions here when we're working with dependent samples t-test, and the first is again we only have two sets of data um, that are being used uh, to compare to each other on a single quantitative outcome or single quantitative variable. Now in this case, we the two sets of data we're going to work with are set up as a kind of a pre-test, post-test design. So what we're going to do here, we're measuring the body temperature of, of a group of people while they're exercising in degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to subject them to a uh, special kind of treatment uh, to help try and cool their body temperature during exercise and then we will measure their body temperature as they continue to exercise after they've been subjected to that treatment. Okay, so it's a very common type of experimental design. It's also known as a repeated measures design in which we're measuring a group of subjects once, subjecting them to a treatment, and then re-measuring them. Okay. So uh, one of the assumptions again is we've gone ahead and checked the data for accuracy, for completeness, as well as normality. Um, you don't have to have randomly chosen subjects uh, in this case, but it does help to have a random sample that you've collected from a population and it helps with the generalizability or the external validity of whatever study you might be um, attempting to perform. Okay, so what makes this unique is the fact that how the data is arranged. We have two columns of data representing the two measurement points. So temperature measure, measurement number one, or the pretest, if you will, and temperature measurement number two, or the post-test. So in order to run the analysis, we go to the Analyze menu. Compare means. And we're going to choose the paired samples t-test. Now before we begin to run the analysis, we still have to come up with a null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis in this case would be that the mean temperature for the pretest or temperature number one will be equivalent to the mean temperature for measurement point number two or the post test. Now, this has been set up in a way that is time dependent. In other words, we have a pretest, post test design, and which data point came first matters to us. Um, in some crossover designs, in which people are going to be subjected to two different treatments in a random way then how we enter the variables into SPSS does not matter. Um, but in this case, because it's a pre-test, post-test, time-dependent design, then uh, it does matter, and we'll get to that in a second. So we've got our no hypothesis. Our next step is to determine our hypothesis testing criteria. So again, we're going to test at the alpha level of P less than 0.05. And so what we're going to do here then is if we have a calculated T value, that's associated with a p-value less than 0.05, then we're going to say that the two groups are significantly different from one, one another, and we can reject the null hypothesis. If we calculate a t-score that's associated with a p-value greater than 0.05, then we're going to say there is not a statistically significant difference, or there's an unclear effect, and we're going to go ahead and accept that null hypothesis. All right, so once we've established that, our next step is to enter the variables in. As you can see, I've entered temperature number one in first, because that's the first measurement that we took, and temperature number two in second. So in this case, again, there's, it's time dependent. In other research designs, that might not matter, like a crossover design, which came first, because they were randomly assigned, then it doesn't really matter what order we entered them in. But in this case, it does. Okay, once we have our variables entered, then we can go ahead and click the OK button. 
Now the first thing we can see are the descriptors for each of the two measurement points. So the temperature, body temperature of the group of subjects before the treatment averaged 100.47 degrees Fahrenheit with a, with a variance of 0.349 degrees. The body temperature measured after the treatment had a mean of 99.61 and then uh, with a variance of 0.934. So it appears that the treatment lowered the body temperature uh, after the treatment. So the body temperature before the treatment was higher than it was after the treatment. But we need to determine if it is statistically significant in its difference. In other words, is the difference caused by the treatment or is the difference caused potentially by some other variable or some other effect? Okay, so the first thing we want to do is find that T value. And we see that here. Okay, 4.361. Okay, and that is associated with a P value of less than 0.05. So it's actually less than 0.01. So based upon our criteria, we'd be able to say that there is a statistically significant difference between the two groups, okay, at that 0.05 level. And it appears that it is a true difference between the groups and not a random difference or not some other kind of error that could be causing that, that change. So it appears the treatment was effective. It appears to have caused a change in the subjects. Now, to try and get a handle on the clinical significance of this result, obviously it's statistically significant, but to get a handle on the clinical significance, we can look at the 95% confidence interval of that difference. So again, what this is telling us is if we were to do this, this experiment 100 times with 100 different samples, that 95% of those samples would have a difference from pretest to post-test between 0.45 and 1.25 degrees. So the mean difference in our sample was 0.85 degrees. In other words, it dropped body temperature by almost a full degree. But in other samples, that change could be as low as about a half a degree Fahrenheit or as great as 1.25 degrees Fahrenheit. So depending on your point of view, a drop of 5, 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit might not seem like very much but certainly a drop of 1.25 is, is, is a huge drop. And so we could say that not only is this statistically significant, but it also appears to have some pretty strong clinical significance. So again, to summarize, uh, when we do the paired samples t-test, the assumptions are that the two groups of data are related or paired or matched in some fashion, whether it's the same group of people being measured twice or whether it's very closely matched groups of Two different, people, two different groups of people very closely matched being compared. We assume possibly some level of randomization, but there doesn't have to be. We're assuming that we have normal data. And then we look at the t-score and see if it's associated with a p-value that meets or does not meet our hypothesis testing criteria. And we can make a decision about the hypothesis test. And then we can also look at the 95% confidence interval of the difference to try and determine if there is some clinical significance. Now, if that 95% confidence interval of the difference was very small, maybe it was 0.45 to 0.7, then that might indicate that there really isn't that, not that much difference um, or wouldn't be that much difference in any other sample. So that could then kind of limit the uh, clinical importance of this result.